Welcome back. So last time we restored this McLeod tool and it turned out pretty nice. We used electrolysis to clean all of the rust and all of the crud off of the tool head and then put a new handle on the tool. Today we're working on another tool. This is a combi tool. So a combi tool is a combination of a folding shovel and a folding pick. You've probably all used a shovel like this and military surplus and trenching tool, something like that. Well, it's basically that same thing, but with that pick spike on the back and it's on a longer handle. Now the handle is still very solid, but it has been sitting out in the weather for a while. You can see that it's kind of gray. Uh, there are some of these cracks in it where the wood is dried out and split kind of opened up. So what we are going to do today is use a card scraper to clean this handle up so that we can put some finish on it and get it back to working condition. So this is a card scraper. This one is made by DFM Toolworks. Card scrapers come in different shapes. Today, we're going to focus on just using a rectangular card scraper because that's probably the easiest for most folks to find. So here's the handle we're gonna be working on. And you can see that it is pretty dry you can see some of the old varnish here that's kind of peeling off. It, overall, it's just weathered and it needs to be either sanded down or scraped down. I like to use a card scraper because then I don't get all of the dust from sanding. I don't need to wear a mask. I can just scrape things off. I get nice, neat little shavings. It's a lot easier to clean up and it goes a little faster than sanding. This is just a piece of metal and it's got sharp edges. Essentially, you're just using the card scraper to scrape material off of the handle. But you can see it's not really doing a lot right now. That's because we want to sharpen these edges. There's really four steps to sharpening a card scraper. Our first step is to get these edges perfectly square. So we want the flat and the edge to be 90 degree angles. If you're using a brand new card scraper, you can skip over this first step because it should already be square. The first thing we want to do is flatten the sides. To do that, I like to use something like these diamond plates. Ignore my fingers, they're all beat up. I'm just going to kind of gently go in a circular motion not putting a ton of pressure on here and I'm just trying to flatten off this edge and I'm keeping it held flat against that diamond plate. I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just doing about this half inch on the edge here. Whenever I'm sharpening a card scraper, I do both of the long edges at the same time. So I've got more to work with before I have to resharpen. So now my sides are flat. The next thing I want to do is flatten these edges so that they are 90 degree angles to these sides. There's a couple ways to do this. One easy way is to use a block of wood. Another way is to use a clamp. These screw clamps work really well and we'll also need a file. If we're using a block of wood, we can simply lay our file down, put our block of wood, hold it down on the file, put our card scraper against the block of wood. We're not gonna put a ton of pressure on this Mainly we're focused on keeping it flat against the block of wood and the block of wood flat against the file. That way we can get nice, neat, square edges. Now for this other side, I'll show you how I do it with a clamp. I'll just clamp my file in the clamp and then lay my card scraper flat against the top of the clamp. doesn't take a lot. We're not trying to file a ton of material off. Now, the next thing I like to do is get this edge really smooth. And for that, I like to use these plates. Just put our block of wood on the plate, put our card there. I'm not applying much pressure at all. I'm really just trying to polish this edge up and make sure there's no file marks in there. So now that we've got our edges nice and square, we're going to move on to forming a burr on the edge. That's where this comes in. 
This is just a hardened steel rod. And what we're going to do with this is actually bend the metal to form a small metal burr or a hook on the edge of the card. And that's what's going to do all the cutting. So I'm backing up so we can see the edge of the table because I used the edge of the table to do this. Put the card scraper about a half inch to three quarters inch from the edge of the table so that when I set the burnishing rod on the card scraper and then tip it down to touch the edge of the table, it's just at the slightest angle. And then not applying much pressure, I'm just going to run that burnishing rod along the card. What that is going to do is once I do that on both sides, is it's going to make a U shape on the top of this. So let's do that. Set my card scraper, the edge of the table, put my burnishing rod there, it's flat on top of the card, and then I tip it down ever so slightly to touch the edge of the table. And I'm just gonna run across. So now I have lifted my first part of the burr up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the burnisher uh, perpendicular to the card to flatten those little burrs that we raised up down and push them out. Usually I'll just hold the card here and do my best to set this at a 90 degree angle. You can put your card in the clamp as well. This is just another way to get the best angle possible. We're just going to use very light pressure and 90 degree angle and run across the top and back. And the last thing we're going to do is turn the hook or turn that burr. So we're going to set it on the top and we're going to angle it just slightly, very light pressure. And then we're going to go the other side, same thing, slight angle. Now at this point, if you have gotten a burr on this, you should be able to feel that burr with your fingernail. You should be able to just barely catch it with your fingernail, or if you turn your fingernail over, drag and even cut or scrape off the edge of your fingernail. And you've got that tiny little burr just curled over there. Now that we've got this sharpened up, let's see what it does to this handle. Now you may find that the scraper will work better pushing away from you. Just kind of experiment with it. See what's going to work best for you. The scraper cuts some nice little curls. And when you're doing this on a round handle, you're really only using a tiny bit of that scraper at a time. So make sure while you're scraping, you're moving around on the card and you're using both sides of the card and both edges as well. So if it seems like you're not scraping as well and you're not getting curls, flip it over or flip it around, use the other side. But eventually this is going to get dull. And when that happens, we're going to need to get a new burr on that edge. We don't have to go through the whole sharpening process every time. Next, I'm just going to clean this head up a little bit. Just take a sanding block, very lightly sand this handle and get it ready to put some finish on it. Last thing is to put some finish on this handle. Now, because this is an old handle, I wanna put something on here that's really gonna soak in there and help get this handle rejuvenated because it's pretty dried out. So I'm going to use some linseed oil. This is not boiled linseed oil. This is pure raw linseed oil. 
Now I've used boiled linseed oil for a long time on pretty much every wooden handle or tool. Some people have commented and said, don't use boiled linseed oil because it will spontaneously combust and it's gonna light everything on fire. Raw linseed oil will also spontaneously combust. Do you know what else will spontaneously combust? Almost all natural, like carbon-based, food-based oils. Olive oil, canola oil, most cooking oils also can spontaneously combust. If you wipe up an oil spill in your kitchen, wad up those paper towels and chuck them in your kitchen garbage. <coughs> that can spontaneously combust the same as your boiled linseed oil rags in your trash can in your garage. I've never really thought about any of my finishes spontaneously combusting because I learned from a very early age how to use finishes and the rags and things associated with them correctly. And I didn't even realize that I was learning it. But my grandpa always took the rags and brushes, whatever we used, to put on any sort of varnish or finish or stain. And he would take them, open them up, and hang them on the edge of the metal trash can in the garage. And they had to hang there until they were dry. I didn't know why but that's what I have always done. I just did that because that's what I did when I was helping my grandpa when I was, you know, nine or 10 years old or younger. Now I know that my grandpa was doing that because he didn't want his garage to light on fire. The reason I'm not using boiled linseed oil is because of the additives that are in it. Most boiled linseed oil that you buy in the store is not actually boiled. It just has a lot of additives to help it dry faster. And those additives, can be quite toxic. I have little kids who like to come in and touch everything in the garage. I'm using this, which is safer. So let's get on to this. I guess I could use this knife I've had here this whole time. I'm just gonna grab a rag and clean up my drips and then I'll take my rag and my brush and wad them into a small ball and chuck them in the corner of the garage. So it has been a day, a little over a day, and linseed oil's not completely dry, but it's not wet to the touch anymore. So I think this tool is ready to use again. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you and I will see you next time.